Listen to that roar. I think Ernie will have it by the time they reach Mish by the time they reach turn three, second lap. Okay. Well that's a better bet actually. A more interesting bet, shall I say. He's got one already. It's ahead of the number six of Frank Chopatini. 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 All right, then, get ready for the green flag. Group 10 about to get underway for their second race of the weekend. And away they go. NASCAR roars. Porsche roars. Randy Walker in third. They all spread out. Where's Ernie going to pop out? I'm Ernie wondering. Francis just being patient. Yeah, into the first corner they go. And into third goes the number 15. Ike Keeler in that Bud Moore livery, tribute livery. Now, this is where uh, it all went wrong for Ernie earlier today. Yeah. So Ernie's he's picked up one spot. Biden is time here. Joe Biden is time. Yep, he's one spot up into, th into the turn three. And looking to try and make another move. But the field's starting to spread out, so he's going to have to get a hurry on. Jeff Rocco not in any mood in the Pontiac Grand Prix to yeah. slow down. Down towards the Cube 3, turn 7, hairpin. Under braking, this is where the NASCARs, if you will, have a bit of a disadvantage. The heavier, not as good a brakes as the more nimble Porsches. But this, you know, we say this every time, but that is the era that I liked, where the NASCAR cars actually look like the cars that they were based on. Like, that looks like a Pontiac Grand Prix. Soon after that, they started looking like, you know, uh, they resembled the cars that they're based on. Silhouette, as we call yeah. it. Yes. No, I know. I, 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 I share your interest in them looking. I, I like the Gen 3 car. I like the fact that it's just a little bit more yeah. racier. Yeah. And actually does look a bit more like the Yeah, it does. Car. I now, think here they, comes Ernie. They got that right. Now, by the way, this is one of Ernie's uh, championship-winning cars. Now, he's been away from um, Trans Am for two years now. He's been doing Indy Next. Uh, he's still a youngster, remember. But seven titles in all, four uh, consecutively in uh, Trans Am. That's, of course, what Chris Dyson is chasing this year, but he's not made it easy for himself in the first round. So it's great to see Ernie in his championship winning TA car. Put on a hell of a show back in the day. Down the back straight, roaring, making a beautiful sound, even echoing through our commentary box here. Sounds but like an aeroplane landing. It is cup car versus cup car, because I think that car ahead would have been a Winston Cup car. It looks like the era that Winston was still the main sponsor of NASCAR. So that's a Cup car versus a Porsche Cup car. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a 992 GT3. What's the difference between a 991 GT2, 3 GT3 and a 992 GT3? You know? Well, they're different numbers. Thank you. That's brilliant. <laughs> you know, I can see why <laughs> we got you. That's what I know. Yeah, that's my expertise. Yeah. yeah. One's bigger than the other. Thanks very much. Yeah, I don't know. I, Thanks I, for playing. They all look... To, to be honest, and I know I'm going to get criticized for this, but they all look the same to me. Yeah. Oh. oh. I know that I'm about to. You're just going make straight the to hell for that one. Up. Oh man. But Less you know, than a I'm second between it. Rocco and Wick, though, at the front, which is good. And then a bit of a gap to Walker in third. Keeler still fourth, and there's a good battle going on for third and fourth. Ernie Francis is up to fifth. Where did you say he would be by the I end? I thought of he would be by him by now, but he's actually being pretty patient. Um, he doesn't want to tear up that car because no, he, he has to fix it. <laughs> he has to fix it. Love to take it home and fix it. He's already had one smash. He's already got a repair bill for Weaver at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he won't be paying that, I don't think. But look at him go. He is scything his way, as he always did, through the field. We've seen Ernie do this when he was back you in the know, day. But, but look at this. All of the IndyCar paddock is here. Yeah. Ernie Francis was just in IndyCar, yeah. you know, yeah. in that family. So maybe this is a little bit like, hey, Hey, guys, don't forget me. Check this out. Well, I heard this morning that he did get a late offer from Indy Next to be in the championship this year, but he'd already signed up yeah. with Trofeo. So he may find and squeeze in some Indy Next uh, races in he his needs schedule. To because you, the talent is one thing. Yeah. But the personality, the work ethic, the person that he is, if I were a team owner, he fits Every every check mark in there. Well, I, I I pray for the day when he gets picked up by a big IMSA team because look out IMSA because he will he will absolutely do the twelve hours, the twenty four hours. He'll do Le Mans, he'll do IMSA, and before you know where you are, he'll be doing WEC because he's that good a driver. And he's what twenty four? Yeah, looks like he's going to be a lap later than I had predicted. <laughs> 
Well, there's your $100 gone, but he's already passed another man as they cross the line. Ernie up to second place now and chasing the leader. It's now NASCAR versus Trans Am. Pontiac versus Ford versus Porsche. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, as is always here. Yeah. Look at Ernie. Oh, gosh. He's going to make it before turn three, is he? Yep, under braking. Ernie See, Francis Jr. See, that was a lap late. Lap late. I'm sorry, but your $100 stays in your pocket. Yeah, that imaginary $100, it yeah. does. But Ernie Francis Jr. has gone from the back to lead the race now here in Group 10, as we predicted. And from here on in, goodbye, everybody else. It's the Ernie Show. But this battle between Wicked and uh, Jeff good. Rocco is still really good. Now watch this Porsche be able to Should outbreak. Should break him now, Just yeah. Right by. And then... Uh, from 60, 60 oh, he's not giving up. Oh, gosh. All right, let's see if you got the grunt, Dan Fangio. Come on. Come on, NASCAR. Boogity, boogity. You got to wonder if Rusty Wallace ever comes across these clips and just thinks, you know, it's what so cool doing to see these cars. cars. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't, you know, as a driver, you don't want him to just waste away in a museum. Oh, you certainly don't. You'd love you to see him out there. On track, yeah. and, and, you know, I bet you Rusty Wallace is like, I'd like to drive that thing around oh, Sebring. I'm sure with uh, social media the way it is, he probably gets Instagrams of this car every weekend. Yeah, I'm sure he's got, I'm sure he's been texted. Yeah. Your car's racing right now. Where you are you? check it out. Are, yeah. you, are you in it? <laughs> That's probably what people say. Were you at Sunset last week? Now, we will have some legends with us in July at Lime Rock, the Speed Tour All-Star Race, and we have some huge names. Come like. On. Well, first of all, let me just say this. Greg Biffle and Boris Said are about to be on track together. Oh, so my word. What could go wrong there? Nothing. Then we've got, like, Ryan Newman, Bill Elliott. Oh, um, awesome. Labonte's going to be out there. Uh, Hornaday's going to be out there. So we have a huge list of cars. But will, this will, time Farrell, will Will Farrell be out there in his uh, <laughs> maybe, NASCAR? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. In the, yeah, he'll be out there, the Ricky Bobby yeah. Talladega Knights. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to be in TA2 cars this time. Well, Ernie sets a brilliant scintillating 0 02, 2 minutes and 4.2 seconds. So he is railing around up there. He's, <laughs> he's miles ahead in terms of time than anybody else out there, enjoying every minute of it. This is why, by the way, he came back. He wasn't even supposed to do the Trans Am race. He came back specifically to do this historic Group 10 race. And then uh, Brent Cruz fell ill. So uh, that's how he got a chance to do the TA again. Uh, didn't come to anything, but he did get the pole, the fastest lap yeah. he's ever done here, a 58-4 around here. Wow. Pretty impressive. There's Dave Ricci. We saw Frank Ciopatini through there. And there is the 110 of Tom McGlynn, Young Blood Wheels. What is Young Blood Wheels? That's his wheel company. He okay. was a, a partner and supporter of us last year, and uh, we got to go to his factory just uh, south of Sonoma. And there's the Frasers. We haven't seen much of the, the, those two cars, Scott but the Casey Rick. Kane car and the Hooters car. Oh, I man, I, he told me yesterday, who would have driven the Hooters car back in the day? He told me, and I can't remember now. They had a pair of drivers, didn't they? <laughs> that's the best one this weekend. And there it goes, uh, that's well, in I, the house. I thought you took it endurance racing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. But um, come on, comment people, who was in that car? And Robert Ness says, he ain't first, you're last. So yeah, he liked first, your Ricky Bobby comment. Rocky Bobby comment. Good. A few years ago, uh, we rented out Rockingham and did an SVRA event at Rockingham. And we reenacted uh, with one of our drivers, uh, Ron Branham, stripped down to his underwear, got out of the car, oh, no. and said he was on fire. <laughs> and I have it all on video. I'm going to have to share it. that to our social channels as we zoom in here on Frank Chopatini. Yeah, he's had a good run. He's sixth place at the moment, chasing down Ike Keeler. Dave Rishi up to seventh. He's gone forward. Alan Kowicki, that's who it was in the Hooters car. Who wins that one? That is Brandon Temple wins the congratulations Alan from us. Alan Kowicki, yeah. yeah. Good call. And like a true NASCAR fan, Brandon Temple didn't spell his name right. Well, Alan everybody Kowicki. else seems to remember who but drove I, the Hooters car, except does. Yeah, I guess so. There we go. He was the owner driver. But Brett Bourdain drove this particular car. Wow, look, our audience is on it. They are. I love it. See? We've got experts everywhere, and we absolutely love that. There's that Dave Ricci Camaro. Beautiful car. Yeah, breathless prepared, and that means it's a Francis family Did you see affair? all the Corvairs? All the Corvairs were Ernie Francis's, yeah, too. Out there. I love that Monza station wagon in the paddock. And he's just done another two. He's just flying. 204-0 this time. Here comes uh, Casey Kane. 
I do apologize for that. We had a lot of experts here on the comment chat. I really did think that was the Bill Elliott car, but you guys were correct. So feel free to correct us whenever we get it wrong. We do like to get things right. Jonathan told me it was Casey Kane, and I told him, no, it was Bill Elliott. So I apologize for that. It's all right. We're, you're forgiven. So only Francis has extended his lead to almost 20 seconds now in the time that uh, he got into the lead from the back. And he's still got time to extend it further. Just enjoying the sunshine of Florida. Ernie Francis Jr., welcome back to the Trans Am paddock. It's great to have him. It was so cool to have him in the paddock and get to interview him one last time on the grid, you know, mm -hmm. after he's been gone for two years and, and doing so well in his career. Yeah, I've been watching him in Indy Next. He's not had the best of times, but it's never easy. I mean, I, you know, it's, it, that's the rough and tumble. That's the hard, one of the hardest championships in the world, in my mind. And, uh, you know, he, he never really thought about being an open-wheel no. driver. He, his path, he really always wanted to be a sports car driver. Yep. Yeah, not a, not, never looked towards stock cars per se. Did Trans Am, was surprised by how well he did in Trans Am. And then he ran an Xfinity race, though, at Road America. Yes, did he did. Pretty well. Yeah. But here they come. Look at this battle here. Alan Davis and Alan Kowicki. with a pair of ones on the side of it. So that's the Alan Kowicki car, and the Frasers are usually in green midget spridget cars with this group one car. So I told him, I was like, you couldn't have gone to a more different car. You know, they went from a light, low horsepower car to a way too much horsepower, way too much weight, no brakes car. Mm -hmm. So Ernie's extended his lead over Charles Wick to some 27 seconds. He's, he's not really holding back, is he? <laughs> Rick Frazier won our customer's bank. Uh, just basically a great American citizen award last night. That's him there. How did and he, then what, his, what did he qualify for that? How did he uh, Just that? all the philanthropy the Frazier oh, okay. family does. Yeah, yeah. And customer's bank wanted to reward that. That's and nice. then Scott Frazier uh, won his group, group one champion i think that's his third win and he's been a group one national champion a few times so now they've moved up to this group 10 stock car and there's alan davison in that ta2 car alan davison another one of our svra drivers who really stepped out last year and sponsored dylan archer that's right for for many races that was really cool to see so thank you alan davison for doing that yep and dylan a uh, pretty good talent to be honest um he evan slater there's a couple of guys that i really like to see back uh, thad boffett seems to have disappeared as well i'm guessing he's on to bigger and better but uh, i'd like to see the two i mentioned earlier back in the seat although it's great having evan in the commentary booth So we're getting down to the closing stages of this. Ernie Francis Jr. has made it a cakewalk, as they say here in the US of A. So Ike Keeler got around that Camaro. White flag will be out for Ernie in a moment. And this is a good little battle between these two. In fact, that's the best view of those corners I've seen at Sebring. I always get confused when it's on board or low down at that shot. You, get, you, you can follow it much easier through 15 and 15A from above. Here comes your leader. Or leaders. I thought Ernie Francis was the yeah, leader. Sorry, yeah, he's gone already. That's our leader in stock car, though. You're That's correct right. there. Thank you. Thank you for uh, holding me up. I love the font of those numbers there. Do you like that? Randy Walker. And Ike Keeler going at it right here. Sounds like a band. Ford versus Chevy. 35 seconds now over Wicked in second place. Rocco, uh, some seven seconds off third place. And through goes the 03 of Walker in fifth. There's a slight delineation. So Ike Keeler is in a TA2 car. I don't think Randy Walker is technically in a TA2 car. I don't know what the delineation is, but there's something in that car that makes it not a TA2 car. Okay. And then there's our cup car. <laughs> the Porsche cup car. There's our cup, cup car. car. <laughs> Back in the day when the drivers would get out and you could barely understand them. You know, they'd be like, oh, man, that SLB cut me off in the turn four. I like those days of NASCAR. Where are you from, Tennessee? Yeah, I am from Tennessee. <laughs> 
And I had trouble understanding some of the NASCAR drivers, like Ward Burton. Whew. They'd have to put like closed captioning to interview him after a race. I used to do the, I used to do the Daytona 5 uh, 100 for Channel 5 in the UK. Boy, that was fun. <laughs> Try, trying to explain what was going on. Yeah. Yes, they're turning left <laughs> and left again. So we're getting to the closing stages. Ernie Francis Jr. absolutely in the zone in the 1998, 98, excuse me, A. That is his Ford Mustang of yesteryear. And I bet he's enjoying being reunited with the old girl, to be honest. I think that's, he hasn't had much to enjoy. He was really enjoying that Dodge Challenger until he got taken out. Out of the mist comes that Porsche. Is Ernie still out there? I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, he's, he's just gone. He's so far ahead. Jeff Rocco, though, man, really great talent. That's a difficult car to drive. Yeah, I can imagine. At Sebring. And, um, you know, before I say anything, John, before I jinx this, I just want to point out we haven't had a double yellow in any of the SVRA races this weekend. Oh, you've done it now, haven't you? No, you're absolutely right, though. Some no, good, clean racing good, to start the racing. season. Yeah, exactly. I love it. it. Good job, SVRA races. Uh, see, oh, reserve. pass here. Randy Walker over Ike Keeler. Yeah, he did. Randy Walker moves up to fourth Ike place. Ike Keeler's fallen back. Not sure what's happening there. Well, he's been chasing the last two laps. He's finally got by. Just a big shout out to Juan Gonzalez Mission Foods. Thank you for supporting us these couple years. We've had a lot of fun. We've got the Mission Foods Laguna Seca Speed Tour coming up here soon. Now, keep an eye on Randy Walker because he's in fourth at the moment. He's now going to try and see if he can chase down Jeff Rocker. Closing stages of this one. Here comes the Pontiac into braking. Let's take a look at the gap as they come out of this corner. It's not too bad. The Pontiac's got a good, good advantage, but from high above, you can see it's not that much. So he's closing in the gap from fourth place now is Randy Walker in that Camaro. Into Tower Corner and down towards Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. You said Camaro like an American. Did you like that? Yeah. Yeah, I've been practicing. Because it's a Camaro and we come where we come from. You say it differently. It's Camaro right now. Come on now. Oh, what a mistake. He was pushing a little too hard was the 15 of Ike Keeler. And he's gathered it all together, but a uh, bit of a moment there for Ike. Nice job from Ike Keeler. Good recovery. We saw him kind of falling back, and then he went through turn five. I saw him go wider than usual, so maybe the tires are falling away yeah, from him. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's hot out there, too. It's a hot day here in Florida. Wind has gone away. I, I think Rocco's going to be able to take it here. Yeah, he's, he's certainly caught up enough. We'll check the gap between them coming into the next lap. Chopatini. Frank Chopatini. I like that era of the Camaro. You do? Yeah, I do. Because I think that was kind of like, you know, I was high school age-ish. Well, you, yeah, but you were, what, you were high school for like 15 years, weren't you? Yeah, still no degree. Still no degree. Second, no. Well, now Chopatini's turned it on as he comes up behind Randy Walker. Now, Chopatini is the fastest man out there. He's just done his fastest lap, a 212.7. Obviously, that's not on the same pace as Ernie, but of that group of races that uh, we're looking at. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But he's up to fifth, just to this fastest lap, as we say. Here he is. Yeah, what's happened here? Frank Chopatini turning it on. I know, the closing stages. I see, the, I see them waving the white flag. There we go. White flag is out. And back to our leaders. There's Arnie Francis Jr. Just made a pass on Alan Kowicki. It's just a joy to watch Ernie. It really is. Uh, he's ever so smooth. He's so precise. And uh, he just does what it needs to be done. I mean, he's gapped them. Well, he came from the back, and now he's gapped them by almost a lap. 
uh, over 45 seconds ahead of the rest of the field. That's how fast he is. So when I was talking to Bobby Labonte, I asked him, how, how do you want me to pronounce your name? And he said, well, we pronounce it Labonte, but all NASCAR fans and announcers call it Labonte. Labonte. They, he says they try to shorten all the words. Right. Why waste a valve? Yeah. You know, hard times. Look at that. That's a beautiful car. And obviously, it's still got the pace. Oh, yeah, no question. It's been prepared perfectly again by Breathless, his family team. Goes into the hairpin at uh, turn seven, Q3 again. Down the mini straight that bends around and jinks to the left and the right, although they call it the Vangio straight. And then the home run down through this next complex here, past the Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend, and into 15A, then 16, and then that long run down to the final corner. Let's celebrate with one of our great champions, seven times Trans Am champion, not taking part in SVRA. Look at that. TA2, TA car. That was a great representation of the differences yeah. of the cars. No kidding. And Ernie Francis Jr. from Jupiter, Florida, coming out of the last corner. And we'll see the checkered flag for the umpteenth time here at Sebring and win in SVRA as he has done so many times before in Trans Am. Well done, Ernie. It's cool to hear you say Ernie Francis Jr. takes the checkered flag again. Yeah. Yeah, I was very lucky to come into Trans Am just when he was at the height of his powers, and uh, he was a phenom. Yes. I missed his uh, GT Stroke production car day wins, but he, he must have been GT, GT champion. Then what was it, TA3? Yeah, I think TA3, maybe TA4 the first time That's back right. then. Yep, because he got seven in total and four consecutive TA titles. Mm -hmm. oh, plane landing. And Charles Wick coming out of the heat haze and still hasn't finished the race in second place yet. Here he comes. And he's not going slow, folks. Mm -mm. So Charles Vick, Wick in that 992 GT3 Cup car, comes out of the Mission Foods Sunset corner for the last time to take the checkered flag and take second place. See the long time coming, but he'll take it. And Jeff Rocco will shortly be crossing the line again in that uh, black Pontiac Grand Prix car to take third. And actually, Frank Ciappettino got ahead Whoa. and got third. Well done. Well, we said he was going what? quick at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. He, he beat Jeff Rocco right at the end. Amazing. Great stuff. So Frank Ciappettino takes the Camaro to Wait, hold on. we got to get it right. Chopatini. That's it. Chopatini. Excuse me. Well, that was an interesting race. 